Life is an amazing podcast and it is presented and hosted by myself, Caro, and my sweet dog, Sparky. Give it up for him. I hope you're ready. Enjoy. Welcome back to another episode of Go For Your Life. And this is actually really nice because I'm um, sitting outside in a wonderful garden um, at Little Plant Pantry, which uh, very fast became my favorite place in Amsterdam. It's around the corner from my house. And I'm sitting here with Winter. Hello. Yay. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for, um, for doing this, Winter. Oh, you're welcome. Delighted. For taking the time. And um, so, yeah, just to give you guys a bit of an idea, um, this is a beautiful little shop uh, in Amsterdam. And uh, it's called Little Plant Pantry. And basically, people can bring their, their own jars and their own containers and they fill it up. It's kind of really a, a no-waste shop uh, promoting, uh, you know, sustainable living, I would say. And it's all vegan as well. Correct. Right, Winter? Yeah. And vegan. so how long have you been here now? Uh, myself and Maria, my wife, we moved over here uh, in August... Losing track of time. Yeah, again. we were just talking about that. <laughs> yeah, in August 20... Uh, what is it now? 2020, 2018. Okay, So in yeah. August 2018, yeah. uh, myself and Maria moved here, and we moved over to open up the shop. Yeah, 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 yeah. And how did you, because you a little bit, let's jump a little bit back in time. I know you, you're like, oh no, time. Um, but you are originally from Ireland, Yes. right? And your wife is Russian. Yes. And how did you guys meet each other in uh, well, she travels? Was, or? Yeah, so Ma- Maria was studying in Trinity College. Uh, she was doing a degree there. And uh, I was living in the west of Ireland at the time. Mm. And uh, during her summer holiday, uh, she decided to go out the west to work uh, in a beautiful area that she had discovered previously. Mm. And she just wanted to, I guess, immersed herself in the west of Ireland and ended up working in a, a bar, restaurant type place. And I went in one day and uh, she <laughs> served me and we got talking and I invited her for a drive. <laughs> and, uh, the rest and is that, history. And that was the end of that. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. That's so cool. Because, and so you, you, then, you guys lived together in Ireland? Or? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we lived in for number of years in Ireland and, and then uh, for one of Maria's years she went to the University of Singapore as well for mm. a year and uh, transferred through her university for the year mm-hmm. and uh, and so we went there and spent 14 months in uh, Southeast Asia and traveled around and then went back to Ireland and lived there for another year again and then came over here mm-hmm. yeah. Because I think this, I think this says it on your website, or I read somewhere. You have a, a, a history, or you know, you have some history in working with in business, right? Like you have a yeah. very yeah, I kind grew of up in, uh, your in your past fashion. life was a little bit different than, or maybe I don't know. Yeah, maybe well, it, it, it comes to use here as well. Certainly, products wise, it was different, but yeah, no, business is business. I yeah. think. and uh, particularly business of a certain size. Mm-hmm. So I've always worked in small business. Always worked for myself. Uh, grew up in that environment, and mm-hmm. my family have uh, owned pubs, so I grew, ah, okay. up, I grew up, as they say, behind bars, mm-hmm. and uh, and uh, so yeah, I, I'm well used to running and managing small businesses, mm-hmm. dealing with the public. Yeah, and that's pretty much what I've done my whole life. Yeah, uh, I've never been involved in selling food before. It was mm-hmm. always pretty much drink, and uh, so it's a new type of products. Uh, certainly a different approach to business but ultimately it's the same thing yeah. and was it also something that you studied like did you study business as well uh, or no went up the hard way the, <laughs> it just basically since I've been young grew up working in it and then you yeah. just develop an instinct for it. absolutely yeah and would you say that because it's something for me as well like the chefing for me is something that I just naturally have and I didn't do I didn't go to culinary school mm-hmm. or something do you think like isn't is an instinct nearly even more important than going to university or like what do you no what do you I, think? I don't actually I, I think uh, instinct is also something you probably develop as opposed to having uh, naturally mm-hmm. uh, when I was in my mid teens I wanted to go to uh, a comprehensive college to learn to become a carpenter mm. and uh, 
my parents didn't want me to do that because mm -hmm. they wanted me to go to university and get a degree and mm -hmm. become a professional and go down that route. And, uh, and if I had gone to that comprehensive college and, and become a carpenter, I'm, I possibly would be a furniture maker now mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. have a completely different life than I, than I do have. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I didn't go and, uh, and I failed in school and I, f and I never went to university <laughs> and because it, it was almost like when somebody tries to force you down a path that's not your own, mm -hmm. I think what happened was I just simply rejected it and yeah. so I, I yeah. uh, without doing so uh, actively, I kind of passively rejected it mm -hmm. and so I never yeah. went to, I, I failed all my exams to get into university even though I'd be bright enough to pass <laughs> them and, yeah. uh, and I never went and so, you know, then life unfolded and I ended up just following my path and kind of yeah uh, I've, I've let life kind of lead me rather than me trying to dictate my life mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. pretty much how I've lived and so I end up where I am just because of that I think yeah of course absolutely yeah. following your own journey yeah in that sense. just let, yeah. led, I, I allow myself to be led yeah and, and yeah that, and, that's and a good this point is where I am you know that's a beautiful thing <laughs> that's that's a that's a good one to uh to remember <laughs> write down in your notebook people <laughs> from listening um, and so you and Maria, um, did you already travel to Amsterdam? Like, how did you, why yeah. Amsterdam? So Maria had been here previously. Mm -hmm. So she had been, before we met, uh, she had spent a little bit of time in Amsterdam. Uh, she first came here with, I think was with her grandmother when she was young, just for a holiday. Mm -hmm. Fell in love with it then. She would have been an, <laughs> only a, a child or whatever. And then always remembered it and came back. Then when she finished school herself and spent about three or four months here, loves the city has a special relationship with it and um, is emotionally attached to it <laughs> and uh, and so when she was in Ireland she always had in the back of her mind of coming back to Amsterdam and spending some time but I didn't know it at all and so when we spoke about opening up a business and a, a shop and talked about our plans uh, she recommended here so we came over here a couple of times I came over on my own and then she came and then we came together and and uh, yeah, I just fell in love with it too. Mm -hmm. So I, I really think it's a perfect size city. I love the size of it. Yeah. I love the architecture. Mm -hmm. I love the way everyone cycles around. Yeah. Uh, I love the safety, the feeling of safety in it. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, and it just has so much to offer that it, it, it's kind of like a perfect place to live, I think. Yeah. If you want to live in a, in a city. Absolutely. Yeah. You've yeah. got to be able, you got to be able to deal with the cityness of yeah. this. It is a big city, lots of people around. And yeah. 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 But I agree with you, everything you're saying. I, I love Amsterdam very much as well. I think it's a beautiful yeah. little bias because I'm from, I'm from Holland, but you know, I think, <laughs> I think Amsterdam also has nothing to do with Holland. I think Amsterdam really is, it's its own entity nearly like it's mm -hmm. just, yeah. I think so too. Wonderful, yeah. Wonderful um, vibes. Yeah, the first month when we came to the Netherlands, we uh, our home wasn't ready yet, so we went to Barneveld. Ah, in the, in the <laughs> yeah, that's a different. That's, a, that's <laughs> Holland. And that's Holland. Yeah, <laughs> very and, different. And that was yeah. something I never even knew existed. Yeah, totally. And uh, yeah, yeah, and that was quite an amazing experience. And and then we uh, well, it wasn't actually Barneveld, but it was close enough to it. But Barneveld was a good example. We were mm -hmm. just outside of it. We used to cycle into Barneveld. Yeah, but it was uh, pretty much the center of the Netherlands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and, yeah. Uh, yeah, I remember one Sunday morning uh, being in Barneveld and it was like an Amish community had suddenly yeah. gathered and, and I thought it was either a film being made. I had no, yeah. I had no idea that that, that existed. That actually is still the there. The yeah. Bible, kind of a Bible mm -hmm. belt, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. yeah, so that was quite astounding. And then as you say, Amsterdam is... Yeah, it's the, the contrast yeah. of that. Absolutely. Yeah. That's insane. That would be very, yeah, that'd be a very interesting experience. Also from not never experiencing that, but also not being from Holland, that would be like, whoa, what? Yeah, I come, what I did I, I just I, like? Yeah. What time machine did I just get into? That's exactly what it felt Absolutely. like. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, surreal, yeah. surreal. Yeah. And so the idea of of even just the whole idea, the vision of this this shop or starting is, how did that started happening in your life? Like, well, that uh, grew. Uh, without any pun intended organically mm -hmm. and uh, it was basically we were myself and Maria were living in a country in a cottage in the countryside in Ireland uh, very remote area um, and there was no garbage collection uh, mm. no refuse collection and um, the nearest shop was a 40 minute supermarket was a 40 minute drive away from where we were so we'd go once a week and mm -hmm. buy everything and then come back and 
and there was a shed beside the cottage where I would uh, store up all the uh, package waste and all the rubbish that we would build up over time and uh, and then I'd bring it to the to the recycling center and mm -hmm. so on but after six weeks of um, the first six weeks of living there uh, the shed was stuffed with like I can't remember ten bags of like big <laughs> sacks full of plastic packaging yeah tins milk cartons all these type things that that had developed only over two people living in a cottage yeah in our amazing right and we thought that we were living a very sustainable existence <laughs> and we because we were buying everything organic mm -hmm. and we were growing into a vegan diet at that stage mm -hmm. and uh and so we we really saw ourselves living sustainably and then it was really the realization of my first trip to the to the center and I got there and I took out all the the car was completely full uh, with sacks of rubbish and I got there and, and it turned out that at least half of them couldn't be recycled oh, so gee. most of what even I thought was recyclable wasn't, wasn't even, recyclable yeah and so then I woke up and I realized Gee, this is insane if this is, <laughs> if this is what it's like for two people yeah living in the middle of nowhere yeah thinking you're living sustainable, what is it like yeah. if you add it all together Absolutely. all over the world yeah 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 and yeah, it's yeah it's frightening you know? that's a big wake-up call oh for sure. yeah it's really frightening and mm. so then we said well you know it seems like such a huge problem but the only way you can ever deal with such huge problems is to actually change your own existence so yeah for we sure we decided to then change our own existence mm. and then we started to to see and imagine, you know, because there was no bulk store near us, there was no zero waste shop, there was no place to, to do that. So we started to imagine that we got to do something. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, I hadn't been working at that stage for a couple of years, happily, mind you. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I was kind of living, not working, and I realized we would have to get back into a working existence yeah. again. Mm -hmm. And so we talked about opening up a shop and a business and... And this seemed like the most natural thing to do to try and address this problem. And uh, yeah, and it just evolved out of imagining what what kind of shop would we like to go to. Mm -hmm. well, and, and we imagined it first and then we just took from our imagination. And, and do you feel, is this what you imagined? Close, uh, close enough. Uh, unfortunately, hmm. when we imagine things, we only ever imagine all the good stuff. All the good stuff. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's well, how imagination imagi works. Because yes. <laughs> in your imagination, you're, you're not picturing yourself working like a slave mm. from morning till night. Absolutely. And you're not picturing the problems that are going to come and Arise. hit you in the face, you know? Yeah. You're imagining the beauty of the shop and you're imagining all the colors. The people Looks and the so color. pretty. Yeah, and all this Dutch stuff. Dutch people are so nice. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it is what we imagined, but yeah. there's so much more that we didn't imagine. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but the space of what it is, is that something that you imagine, like the size of it and how it looks like? Was that sort of well, there no, in your imagination? No, because, because really what we did, we looked at other properties. Mm. And um, funny enough, on one of our trips to Amsterdam, we wandered into this area. This would have been three years before we uh, actually took over the property. And we wandered into this area and we sat across the street in Cafe Toussaint. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I just fell in love with the area. And I said to me, if only we could find something in this neighborhood, this is where, where mm -hmm. we want to be. Now, at that wow. stage, I was talking about somewhere to live because yeah. we were planning to come and live here. Mm -hmm. And we wandered around the whole neighborhood. I thought, this is the, per this is the perfect neighborhood, blah, blah, yeah. blah. And then we went home and it's a quite an expensive neighborhood. So it became unrealistic to live here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so we went back and, and then we looked at a property two doors up uh, for the shop. Mm -hmm. And because it was on this street, which I love, and we both love because it was on this street, uh, we nearly took it, but then we were advised against it by our agent for different reasons. But we actually sat in the window of this property waiting to view the one up the road and we looked in here and it wasn't available for rent at the time it was a child care center ah, okay and we were looking in the window and i looked right through the property and looked at the back garden and i remember saying wow that, that place would be would nice be perfect you know? <laughs> and then what happened was a week later i was walking by to look at the property two doors down to see what you know had it gone yet or what the story hmm. was and I saw a sign in this window and I'd just gone up. And so wow. I contacted the agent. I just felt this is the property. Yeah, know? manifestation can be a powerful.